Hi folks! Today we're going to talk about unit testing React components because unit testing React components is hard. First off, what's a unit test? A unit test is taking the smallest unit of a piece of software or code you're working on and checking the behavior of that unit to make sure it is what you expect it to be. So a unit test would take that unit of code and make an assertion. Say, if I pass this function x, I expect to get y in return. And if you get y in return, that unit test passes. And if you get something else in return, that unit test fails. And you know you either have a problem or you have a bad unit test. Unit testing gives you confidence that when you make changes to code, that you can run a set of tests and make sure you haven't screwed things up. Make sure that things are still behaving the way you expect them to behave. It's not perfection. When you read about unit testing online, it can have an almost religious fervor to it, like there's rainbows and unicorns. and It's not that. It's not perfect for a couple of reasons. One, you're testing for the things that you imagine could go wrong. And if you could imagine everything that could go wrong, you probably don't need unit tests. You're probably not even a human. The idea is if you, something falls through your tests and go wrong, you can add that to your tests and you won't have to deal with that bug again, which is a good thing. Only thing worse than dealing with bug is dealing with a bug twice. The other problem with it is that applications can have emergent behavior when the units, individual units of a piece of software are working together that are unexpected. And since you're testing at the smallest level of units, that's kind of hard to see. And if your application has a user interface, of course, unit testing isn't doing a whole lot for you on that aspect of it. So, the idea is that unit test solves all the world's problems is not really true. You'll still do unit tests and then after that you will still pull the system up and poke it a bit to make sure everything is okay. But what unit tests are is a lot, lot better than not having unit tests. So it's really something you should do. Some people uh, write unit tests before they write their actual code. And if nothing else, that may, forces you to really think about what this code's going to do before you start writing it, which is always a good thing. Now, unit testing in React is kind of hard because React doesn't create the same kind of output, say, a JavaScript function was. Like if JavaScript function produces a Boolean or an integer or a string or an array or a JSON object, you can it's very easy to test for those things. A React component creates a component and it's just a harder thing to test. React also requires a lot of additional setup and handling to get it to everything working, which is a bit of a pain too. So React components are hard to test. If you Google unit testing React components, we look at the first 10 articles, they're probably doing it 10 different ways because there's not a single great way to do it. The way I'm going to show you isn't a great way either, but it's for me the best way I've found to do it and the most simple way I've found to do it. So let's take a look. Here's the old package.json and the components we're going to load. Of course, you're going to need React and you will also need the React add-ons test utils. We're going to use something in React called a shallow renderer, which means it renders shallowly. It renders one level deep. And it's how uh, they recommend you do testing now. Those are our React modules we'll need. Our test runner is called tape. There are lots of test runners. Uh, the most popular is probably Mocha, I'm guessing. Uh, Facebook even has their own uh, test runner called Jest, which I've tried and I 
don't really care for. Tape is just really, 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 really simple and straightforward, which is all I need out of unit testing. So that's what I prefer to use. So we're loading tape and a couple different things for tape. We're doing extend tape, which allows you to add additional assertions to tape. Assertions are just things, I expect this to equal this. Those are assertions. We are doing an additional assertion for JSX, for React, for tape, which we'll use extend tape to add to tape. And we're using tap spec to style the tape output, the tap output of tape, because the default output is just kind of bleh. And finally, and this is kind of optional, I'm using it here, but you don't have to, we're loading some Babel. The React folks recommend you make their components using ES6 classes now, and Babel is just kind of cool, and ES6, or ES2015, pardon me, is kind of cool. So we're going to be using Babel here. Babel 6 is a little different. The modules are, are named differently, so it might not be exactly what you're used to seeing. We're using Babel register, Babel presets for React, and a preset for ES2015. Now there's two ways to get Babel to load your presets. One is with a .babelrc file, and the other is to put it right in your package.json. That's where I tend to put it because it's just one less file to keep track of. So we'll go Babel and tell it to load those two presets. To run our actual tests with tape, I'm using npm for it. So when you have scripts in npm, you can, at the command line, type npm run test, and it runs uh, what we have set out for test in your package.json. We're going tape dash r loads this module for us so we're doing babel register so all of our babel stuff will transpile then we're just grabbing every javascript file in our test folder in this case there's only one and then we're piping that through tap spec so it's pretty you see it's a pretty straightforward setup to get working it's it's easier than some of the other ways i've seen to unit test react components our actual component. And this is, of course is a, a very useful component you'll want in all your projects. It's called hello. Uh, it basically makes an H1 tag that says hello, something from your state and something from your properties. And it has a click event. The click event just changes something from your state. So it'll say, hello something something and if you click that h1 it'll say hello something else something this is a little different this is how you do get initial state in es6 for react components you don't use get initial state use this constructor properties and we're just setting the initial state of this honorific state of our component that's it just makes an h1 tag that changes a word in it if you click it of course, you'll want this for all your projects. Now our test. This is where we're doing the fun stuff. Now we're importing all of our stuff, including our com hello component. And we're making test, a constant test, from tape with the additional assertions from JSX equals, from our tape JSS equals. What this lets us do is instead of comparing all the weird crap that comes out of React, uh, which is kind of hard to translate into bug. It's testing just the component output, just the actual H1 with stuff that it made, which is really what we're interested in testing. So we're going to run our test now. We go, we're calling this test hello component. We're going to create our renderer, and this is our shallow renderer. And we're going to render. Hello, I'm going to go name equals Jim Bob, We're setting that property because I'm in the South and almost everyone has two first names. Actual element will get the output from this rendering. An expected element is what we expect this output to equal. We expect it's going to equal uh, h1 on click function 
and then hello Captain Jim Bob, because Captain is our default honorific. We can also use this to simulate, simulate interactions with the React component. So here we're doing that on click event for that component and getting uh, the, the component output for event that was clicked after it was clicked. And we're getting what we expect that to be. And we expect, uh, we expect that to swap out captain for overlord. And then here's one that we know that's going to fail and it'd be hello private Jim Bob. And we know it's either going to be captain or overlord. So we know that's going to fail. We're going to make those three assertions. We're going to check the default element, the element ever is clicked. And this last one should fail. That's the end of our assertions. So there are three assertions our three tests. Let's pull up a command line. Now we'll go npm run and we just call it test. Now I'm going to do this without, this threw me at first too, uh, when I first started running things through npm. If your npm, the thing you run returns an exit code that isn't zero, npm will just yell at you for a bit. You will get all this kind of error stuff at the end of whatever you ran because the exit code wasn't zero. And that's not really what you want. Uh, I've kind of listened to the, uh, I've read the arguments of the NPM folks of why you really want that. And I see their point. In this case, you don't really want that. So you just add silent to the end and it will make all that stuff not appear. So saying we're doing our hello component test and the two that we made a comment of this should work those both ran okay. Got a green check mark. The one that we had, this should die, that had private Jim Bob, failed. And here it's giving us the failure as a diff from the output, the expected and the actual. And this lets us see very clearly what has gone wrong. And it's a lot easier to debug this output than the regular output you get from React. So it's giving us a final report. There was one failure. So three tests, two passing, one failure, and the duration of our test. That's unit testing for React using tape. And uh, the thing with unit testing React components, and here's where I'm going, going to go, you know, why did I just waste 15 minutes watching this? They're really not as useful. Unit testing a React component, isn't as useful as unit testing other things. And the reason is the thing you most want a unit test for is to make sure when you make a change that the module still behaves the way you expect. But you're probably never going to want to screw around with a React module in a way that doesn't change the output. So whenever you make a change, your tests are probably just going to fail because why would I change this component in a way that would not change this output? Because if the output's right, I don't need to change anything. So after doing all this, you look at it and you go, is this really useful? Is this something I should be spending time on? I would say it still probably is because you can do, uh, testing for things that are unexpected but might still happen like that one yahoo that manages to to you're expecting a date and instead they send you their phone number or you're expecting this and you're expecting that and you're checking that output so even though when you make a change it's going to break probably break your tests you should update your tests and make sure it still runs because you're still checking those edge cases, still making sure things are behaving the way you expect and having that security to know that the changes you're making aren't breaking your stuff. So it's not as useful and it's kind of hard. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a tough thing to do, but it's still probably useful. And as I said at the beginning, this is one of many different ways you can unit test things in React. 
This is the way I found that's easiest. And when you have something that isn't the super most useful test anyway, easy is really a good thing. All right, I'll put this code somewhere. It's either going to be in a blog post. Yeah, I'll probably put it in a blog post. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just look in the show notes and you'll see a link to that and you can copy and paste all this code and have some fun. All right, bye-bye.